Well, now it's time to replace some capacitors. And I mentioned that I like to cut the capacitors that are easiest to get to and open them up so I can get to the ones that are buried, like this one right here. And I did cut it out of the circuit, leaving a length of wire on either side. And that capacitor that's sitting on top of the coil, that's the one that I just took out. And there's the replacement, and I'm hooking them together at one end. And then, of course, I hook the other end. And now it's time to solder. And any time that I'm close to a coil with a soldering iron, I've learned from experience it's a good idea to wrap that coil temporarily in aluminum foil. It'll protect the coil if you accidentally slip with the soldering iron. It saved... Uh, a lot of headaches. Here I've soldered the two connections and now we're on to removing this selenium rectifier. And as you can see it's quite a mess and I decided to go ahead and just in case, put some aluminum foil on the top so uh, if I have any accidents with that soldering iron, I won't hurt that coil. Okay, we've got the selenium rectifier removed. And here's the electrolytic capacitor. We're going to start thinking about how we're going to handle this. And also, well, what will determine that is which is the square and which is the triangle and the one closest to us isn't, isn't marked so that is the 200 microfarad capacitor. Well I got out a magnifying glass and a bright light so I could see the square and the triangle and they're on the far side from here so we can't really see them. It really took a little digging and the magnifying glass and bright light was definitely necessary. But those are the two 40 microfarad capacitors. Okay, I went ahead and replaced this capacitor. And I'm just going to go through here so you can see what I did. Okay, there's the electrolytic. Now, at this point, you can't tell it from this angle. But here's a short uh, vid. I um, did cut the bottom of the 40 microfarad capacitors. Cut them loose from the original capacitor. Here I'm starting to put in a terminal strip so I can start rebuilding the power supply. Here's the diode. And right here, those two terminals on the left there, that's an open in the power supply right now. And I did that because I'll probably have to add a resistor between those two terminals. If not, I'll just short them and we'll be good to go. But chances are we'll have to add a resistor because the selenium rectifier has an internal resistance. And what I found, it's usually right around 150 ohms. But we will find out when we start testing the power supply. Okay, 
There's some more capacitors I replaced. See, they get buried pretty good sometimes. Now what I'm doing is looking for the common ground in here. I've got a common ground hooked up to one side of the meter here on the original electrolytic capacitor. What I'm looking for is another place of, of common ground so I can put in two electrolytic capacitors and I found a common ground here on this side of the switch. That will be useful here. Now, the other side of that is the positive side of the electrolytic one of them and I found that connection there. So for this part of the electrolytic I can fit this large electrolytic capacitor in right here and it will just make it. So now I'm going to look for where I can put the other electrolytic probably over here somewhere. I did find where to solder the leads for the new capacitors and what I'm doing here is I have positioned the old terminals out of the way they're not touching anything and I have poured epoxy glue in there so what I'm doing is I'm making a plastic insulator and when that hardens I'm using five minute but I'll let it set for an hour and that way that ensures that those two unused terminals won't touch anything and won't move. Okay, this is going to be the preliminary test of the power supply. Right now I've got the meter on volts and it's reading a oh, little mellow volts here. And I've got a 150 ohm resistor right here to complete the power supply. And I've got my voltmeter across one of the electrolytics and I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit just to test to see if the polarity is correct. Okay I've turned on the variac now I'm going to increase the voltage just a little bit. Okay a little bit more Yeah, we've got everything wired correctly in the power supply, so we should be good for testing with tubes in it. I forgot to mention, I don't have tubes in the chassis yet. Okay, here's the chassis as it is right now, and that's after the preliminary test of the power supply and this is what we started with thanks for watching